This month, the FBI shut down a whiskey cask investment scam. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at all the lessons that can be taken from this. So welcome to the channel everyone and welcome to our new studio or our alternative studio and before we start this video I'm just going to get something off my chest and it is I told you so we've been talking about whiskey cask investment fraud for years on this channel people have accused us of throwing mud of the cask investment is now completely safe and it's not like the scams of the 1990s the 2000s or the 2010s well look it is Whiskey fraud is back, back in a big way. The FBI have shut down a big scam running into tens of millions of pounds. And, you know, we're here to help you. You know, we don't do these videos to throw mud. We don't do these videos to try and hurt people. We do these videos for consumer protection because it's the protection of our industry that's most important. Because if the integrity of the whiskey industry is impacted by these really dodgy as hell cask investment scams, then we all suffer. So I think it's everybody's responsibility to make sure that these scams aren't allowed to continue. And that's why we're making this video to take a look at some of the lessons that we can learn from them. So the scam itself shut down by the FBI. There's an affidavit that you can download and it goes into about 13 pages worth of information. And I'll put a link to this below, but it really is worth downloading if you're interested in how these frauds work and the mechanics of these frauds because it's not something that you often get to see. Like if this was in the UK, I don't think you'd be able to download the affidavit and all the witness statements and things that led to these arrests. Now, the, the arrest was for a 25 year old man named Casey Alexander, and he's named in here as a suspect. The companies, there are three suspect companies. There's one called Vintage Whiskey Casks. There's Charles Wynn and Windsor Jones. The latter two are mostly focused on wine fraud. Vintage Whiskey Casks, as you would guess, are related to the, the side of the, the, the whiskey cask side of things. Now, it's important to state that despite this affidavit, despite the arrest by the FBI, nobody has been found guilty yet. So we're not saying that there's, you know, we're not pointing the finger in terms of guilt in any one of these. We're just looking at what the FBI or the, the, the US court papers say to see how we can keep you safe. So let's look at the very first lesson that can be learned from this. So this is the first of four lessons and we've got a bonus lesson coming up at the end as well and the first lesson is that just because your casks are in a hmrc bonded warehouse it doesn't mean that they're safe and this is something that a lot of whiskey investment companies talk about on their websites and in their literature they go oh your casks are stored in a hmrc regulated bonded warehouse and in fact i think there's something on the vintage whiskey casks website that goes under this effect so we'll put this on the screen now our whiskey casks are stored in the perfect environment a fully regulated government bonding facility under the watchful eye of master distillers upon purchase yours too will also be stored this way to ensure the highest quality of maturation for more information please download one of our brochures or give us a call so why do companies always talk about casks being stored in a hmrc regulated warehouse because it's basically to try and like pull the wool over your eyes. It gives this wool, lovely, fluffy feeling that your investment is safe and if HMRC are looking after it, nothing could go wrong. And this is the point of this lesson. That protection can only come if that cask is in your name at the warehouse. Who gives the damn if it's custodied in a warehouse, but it doesn't exist. So the point of this, you know, lesson one, the cask is only safe in a bonded warehouse if it's stored in your name and you've got full autonomy over it. If the company still own that cask or the company still have autonomy over that cask, it doesn't matter where it is. It doesn't really matter. And this is like another point to remember, like in this as well, like if you haven't had confirmation directly from the warehouse that the cask is held in your name, you could for all you know be part of a massive Ponzi scheme. These sorts of frauds are able, like, are able to go on because they're so convincing. So if you've not had independent confirmation from the warehouse that's storing your cask, your job this weekend is to find out exactly what warehouse that cask is stored in, send them an email, send them the details of the cask and tell them that you've purchased this cask and that you want to check that it's in their name. Because the point here is that it doesn't matter if you've got a certificate, an invoice and a contract to that cask if it doesn't exist in the first instance. So all of this HMRC bonded warehouse protection, whatever, 
only comes about if you own the cask in the first instance. If you only have title to it, it's not the same. You're not protected. So that brings us nicely on to lesson two of this scam. And that's that just because a company appears legitimate, it doesn't mean they are legitimate. Now, <laughs> Vintage Risky Cask actually tell you to go and do your own due diligence. So again, we'll put this on screen now. The risk is not purchasing from a reputable distillery or company. We always advise investors to do their own due diligence to minimise the risk. And this is simply doing some research in the company and especially the distillery that you're purchasing the casks from. So again, this is a suspect company. They've not been found guilty of anything, but the name in here is a suspect company. It's very easy to make a convincing looking company. It's very easy to register that company on company's house. It's very easy to, to, to get a beautiful looking website and do all the things that make them look authentic. But you don't know their intentions unless you're in the mind of the owner of that company or the person who's conduct, like managing that company on a day to day basis. You've got no idea what their intentions are. So what do I mean by this? So you can buy a cask from a legitimate company. For all intents and purposes, Vintage Whiskey Cask was a legitimate company. They checked out on company's house. Their addresses, well, they had addresses in London. But that's another point we'll come into in a second. So, but the point is that they were scamming people. They set up that legitimate company, apparently, according to the affidavit, to scam people. So this goes back to the point that we just made. If you buy a cask and it's controlled by a third party company and not yourself, then you're completely vulnerable for the lifetime that you own that cask. If anything happens to that company, your cask is threatened too. Because as we've said, if you've got the certificate, the invoice, the contract, and that cask never existed in the first place, then what are you gonna do? The same thing as the people in this fraud are gonna do, and that's get nothing back. So now we move on to the third lesson, and this is a quite a simple one really. Question where the profits are coming from. You know, this was point. This was drawn up, it's in section 38. It says, here you go, the investment was back-end loaded, meaning that VWC would take 10% at the end of the investment. VWC would not make a profit until the investor made a profit or sold off their investment. However, point 39, witness three admitted to making around 2% commission of the dollar amount of each sale. Uh, witness three was also paid for the flights and hotel stays and everything like that and provided funds to use on trips. So seriously, where are the company's profits coming from? Because if you bought a cask from a company and they're telling you that they're only making a profit when you sell that cask and they're taking a 10% share of that profit, come on. How are they running on a day-to-day -day business? How are they affording to buy the inventory of these casks to sell? How are they affording to pay the staff every month? How are they affording to pay the rent every month and the advertising and this, that and the other? It's just an easy way to check whether they're lying to you because if they're telling you that they're only making profit when you sell the cask, which in many cases they're telling you to hold the cask for three, five and ten years time. Seriously, guys, come on. So now we get to lesson four and this is what I said at the start. This is nothing new. Cask investment fraud has been happening in the 1980s, the 90s, the 2000s, the 2010s. And yes, we're back into the 2020s and we've got cask investment fraud being shut down by the FBI. You know, you've got the Nant Distillery, uh, Distillery the Napier Spirit Group, Grand Tullery Distillery, Cavendish Wines. All these companies were shut down by the Serious Fraud Office, etc. And were operating on whiskey fraud. Wine fraud, broadly speaking, if you look at the likes of Rudy, uh, like Rudy in, in, in the US, tends to sort of like focus on sort of like the fakes and manipulation of bottles to, to, to try and deceive the public. Whereas with whiskey, I would argue that the majority of the money, I'd probably even say 99% of the money from whiskey fraud comes in defrauding people with casks rather than faking bottles. Because it's so easy to fake a cask. Because what have you got? Oh, I've got a certificate here. Oh, it's in this warehouse. Oh, it's there. Really? Oh, okay, I'll buy it. It's so easy to manipulate the public. Ten million pounds worth of fraud was in this in this case alone. And this is the only one that's been broken so far. And I think there's going to be a lot more falling to date. So cask investment, the, the method of scamming people has not changed. Just take lessons, take 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 advice from the history. And then this is where we jump into sort of like the bonus of this, this, this sort of video. And if you've ever watched any of my other videos, you'll probably know about this already, but that's get a delivery order. People walk into cask investment thinking, oh, it's lovely, it's a safe asset. You know, even if the value of the cask falls, I've still got the whiskey itself. Well, as we've seen in this, 
Doesn't matter if you've not got the cask held in your name and the company goes bust and the cask wasn't in your name with the warehouse, then you've got neither your money nor your asset. So we're gonna do another video in, in the next couple of days about delivery orders and looking about what the Scotch Whiskey Association says on this. So what do you think? Is this the first of many to crumble? Have you seen any suspect companies out there? Have you, have you been, do you think you've been part of a whiskey scam? Get in the comments below, let me know your thoughts.